Well, it is a bowl game, no question, that features the color red. We're talking about the Rose Bowl, granddaddy of them all. And in this case, it's going to be a national semifinal on New Year's Day between two teams that probably um, sport the color red. Talking about the Crimson and Cream of Oklahoma, and of course, Georgia sporting that red color as well. Big 12 versus the SEC. Winner to go on to face either Clemson or Alabama in the Sugar Bowl New Year's night. Georgia comes into this Rose Bowl game. Well, they come in as a two-and-a-half point favorite. Temperature for the game, by the way, should be just fine. Mid-70s expected in Pasadena. Come kickoff time at 4 o'clock Oklahoma time. And I don't know what the weather will be like in Athens, Georgia on Monday. But I know in Norman, it's only supposed to get into the 20s, possibly teens for a high with that Arctic blast coming in. So at least in Southern California, uh, no need to worry at all about whether it's going to be spectacular and what should be a very good game. Now, I'm going to break down the two obvious matchups in this game. Number one, the Oklahoma offense, one of the best in the country, if not the best, I guess one of the best defenses in the country in Georgia. Of course, we know about Baker Mayfield and the great year that he's had uh, one of the best years in Oklahoma Sooners ever had. Of course, racking up several awards, including the Heisman Trophy, against perhaps um, a, a Georgia defense that, that many think is going to be the key to winning the whole thing for the Bulldogs. And, and believe me, both these teams are capable of winning the whole thing because of their strengths. In the case of Georgia, led by the best linebacker in the country, Roquan Smith, but also getting help, too, from Lorenzo Carter. Georgia's defense has only given up um, just a little bit over 100 yards rushing per game. Very physical type defense, a defense uh, that has shut down so many good offenses this year against an Oklahoma offense that, you know, averages in the 40s per game scoring-wise. Racks up just a ton of yardage, especially through the air, and has so many weapons that Baker Mayfield can choose from. To me, the biggest key in this game, as far as the Oklahoma offense versus the Georgia defense goes, is really me. It's not, it's not Baker Mayfield, okay? Because Baker Mayfield, I think, will have, will have these moments in this game, okay? And I think Georgia will have their moments, too. Rodney Anderson. If you're Oklahoma, use Rodney Anderson as much as you can. Um, we've seen Rodney Anderson be used more and more often as the season has progressed. Remember the first five games, didn't touch the ball a whole lot. That was because it was largely running back by committee with Abdul Adams, with Trey Sermon, with Marcellus Sutton. So Rodney Anderson didn't really get as involved you know, in the rotation all that much. But the last seven games, because the first five games, okay, first five games, Rodney Anderson had a whopping total of 82 yards rushing, only 16 yards per game on the ground, the first five that he competed in. But the last seven games that he played in, much different story, okay? 125 yards rushing per game. Now, receiving-wise, this stat's not just going to jump off the paper and knock your socks off, okay? 36 yards receiving per game, but at least Oklahoma has used him as a receiver and, of course, has utilized his running ability, his toughness, Hard to bring down, but he's a very versatile running back, and he has made a big difference for the Sooner offense. The last seven games, 878 rushing yards. Wow, that's something. In fact, the touchdown production, the last seven games, 14 touchdowns as opposed to only two touchdowns of first two games. Look, for Oklahoma to make it to where Georgia just can't keen in on the likes of Baker Mayfield, you got to have somebody else who can handle the load and Rodney Anderson, if he has a 100-yard pressure game, you know something is going right for the Sooner offense. And I would expect Georgia in a game like this to try to make it to where Mark Andrews doesn't have a statistical game. In other words, I would expect Georgia to double-team Mark Andrews because Mark Andrews has hurt so many defenses all year long. I think Georgia will do everything they can to make Mark Andrews Again, not appear so much on the stat sheet. It doesn't mean, though, that Mark Andrews can't become a factor. Why, you ask? Because if Georgia is focusing a lot on Andrews, that, again, will allow Baker Mayfield, if given time to throw against a terrific front seven in Georgia, to dissect that Bulldog defense. Remember, the Sooners have had big playability all year long with Hollywood Brown, of course, with C.D. Lamb, Jeff Bidette, you know, with Mikhail Jones. If given enough time by the Oklahoma offensive line and also fullback Demetri Flowers to block, I think Baker Mayfield will have a very successful game. But again, you have to have 
another weapon to constantly make Georgia wonder, to make them put focus on other players. And Rodney Anderson is that type of player that we've seen the second half of the season that has made Oklahoma's offense even better than it was during the first half of the campaign. So that's something to look at. If Rodney Anderson does not get going on, I know you got other running backs who are capable of having nice games, but to me, Rodney Anderson is the best of the bunch, and that will keep Oklahoma two-dimensional and allow Oklahoma offensively to have control of the ball. All right, another juicy matchup. The Sooner defense against the Georgia offense that will just provide a steady diet of runs. 260 yards plus per game is what they average on the ground. We know about Nick Chubb, almost 1,200 yards rushing this season, 5.9 yards per carry. We also know, too, about Sonia Michelle, 1,000 yards rushing, 6.9 yards per carry. And don't forget about the third of the three of the monster, DeAndre Swift, 7.9 yards per carry. Wow. That is a load with a capital L, huh? <laughs> um, Georgia is so effective at being able to wear defenses down and keep the chains moving. Remember, Georgia is one of the best teams in the country on third down conversions as well because they set themselves up with third and short quite a bit. About 50% of the time, Georgia converts on third down. That's another fat statistic right there in the column of UGA. So what can you do if you're Oklahoma? Well, I really want to see which Oklahoma defense shows up, first of all, okay, before we talk about anything else. Because remember the first three games of the season, one of them being against Ohio State and Columbus, the Sooners fared well. 4.3 yards per carry, as well as only 13 points per game given up in that first three-game stretch. But the next seven-game cycle was a disaster. Almost seven yards per carry is what they allowed, and 33 points per game. But the last three games, granted one was against Kansas, but the other two were against West Virginia and TCU, good offenses. The Sooners got a little bit of that swagger back. 4.7 is what they allowed per game and 17 points per game in that three-game stretch. So you know that Oklahoma can do it. Um, now, specifically, what can Oklahoma do? I'll tell you the most obvious thing uh, for, for this team, especially with Beal, Kelly, and Obo, the linebackers, are going to have their hands full against that Georgia ball control offense. Wrap up after first contact, okay? And here's a prime example. The last game Oklahoma played was the Big 12 title game against TCU, as you might remember, okay? Remember the second quarter of that game when Oklahoma was up 17-0 and seemingly in control? TCU scored a couple of touchdowns, largely in part because the Sooners did a poor job of wrapping up after first contact. In other words, they were getting to the ball carrier, but they weren't finishing plays. They weren't tackling. And that led to additional yardage by TCU. And the Horned Frogs, for a brief time, got back into the game, trailing 17-14, to 14, largely because the Sooners did not wrap up after first contact. You don't do that against Georgia. The Bulldogs won't just get big gains. They might get home run runs by the likes of Chubb and by the likes of Michelle and possibly Swift as well. The big thing in a game like this, make Georgia rely more on the pass. Roll your dice. Take your chances with Jake Fromm, the freshman quarterback, trying to beat you with his arm. And that's not to say that Jake Fromm is a sorry quarterback. He's not. He's been efficient. He's done exactly what Georgia has asked him to do. But he's done it in situations where the Bulldogs, for the most part this year, have controlled the game running the ball. When you can do that, Fromm can play action and get those favorable matchups. He's put in third and short situations to where a first down conversion is almost obvious, okay? And Georgia has done such a great job, like I mentioned, in controlling the ball because they keep the chains moving because of third and short situations. Make it to where it's a little more than third and short. Make it to where Georgia is going to have to rely more on uh, the arm of Frome than on the legs and durability of the Georgia running backs. And finally, can Oklahoma continue to make those fantastic adjustments after halftime. Now, the big thing for Oklahoma, when I just said make a big adjustments after halftime, is on the defensive side. Because we've seen the struggles that Oklahoma had against Kansas State, against Oklahoma State, against Texas Tech, and in the Big 12 championship game against TCU in the first half. But we saw a different Oklahoma defense in all four of those games where they didn't give up as many points or as many yardage in the second half of those four matchups. I'm convinced that at halftime of this game, the issue is not going to be decided yet. 
but how Mike Stoops and that defensive staff of Oklahoma adjust to Georgia's offense for the third and fourth quarter of this Monday's game will make all the difference to me. They've done a good job, like I said, in making adjustments. We'll see if that trend can continue. Well, my final thoughts on this game, what a way to begin 2018 with the National Semifinal Monday afternoon. Enjoyed, everybody. I, I tell you what, you know, give a big round of applause to both of these teams for making it this far. Remember, there are 130 FBS squads out there. Remember, there's 64 of them that are Power 5, and, of course, the Independents in Notre Dame and BYU. Only 25 teams get ranked. Only 12 go to the New Year's Bowl six games with only four of those 12 teams getting a national semifinal berth. So to make it this far, that is spectacular enough because it's not easy. A couple of things that pop into my head when it comes to a game like this that are difference makers. One, which team has the best player? Well, that's the Sooners with Baker Mayfield. And which team has the most weapons? I believe that's the Oklahoma offense surrounding Baker Mayfield. Not to say it'll be an easy game because it won't be. But I've got the Sooners outlasting the Bulldogs 31-28 to in what should be a very competitive and thrilling Rose Bowl game. And I think Oklahoma will play Clemson on January the 8th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta for the national championship. I think Clemson's defensive line will be the difference in their matchup with Alabama. So I've got Clemson winning the Sugar Bowl. And I've got, like I said, the Sooners and the Tigers uh, meeting, but this time in their biggest head-to-head -head meeting ever for the national championship coming up on January the 8th. That's my opinion. What's yours? Don't forget my post game of Oklahoma and Georgia, which should be interesting. Win or lose for the Sooners. Hopefully a win for OU. I'll have that post game after the Oklahoma-Georgia game on Monday night. Boomer Sooner, and Happy New Year.